Welcome to Asmus Farm Supplies Weekly Agronomy Update. I'm Kevin Adolph, Location Manager and Agronomist here in Fulda, Minnesota. And I'm Eric Winters, also an agronomist here at the Fulda location. This week's episode focuses on the importance of soybean pre-emerge and pre-plant herbicides. Eric, in the last couple of months we've talked to a lot of producers and some of their main concerns are the resistance the herbicides on weeds that they have in their fields today and also on the tough troublesome weeds that they're having and can't control. One of the most successful strategies in weed control is the proper use and planning of a pre-plant or pre-emerge herbicide. Numerous studies have shown that properly using these chemistries can greatly reduce the impact of weeds in your field. But choices are many, so the question becomes which one should I use? Kevin, if I were a grower that was walking into your office today and wanted a good strategy for controlling tough weeds and soybeans with a pre-plant or pre-emerge herbicide, which one would I want to choose? Eric, probably one of the first things that I would do if you walked into my office is I'd like to get a little bit of history of what your fields have been in the past and what weeds that you need to control and you feel that you will have problems with in this next year. For an example, if you've had history of giant ragweed, cockleburrs, or sunflowers, I would probably recommend an ALS type chemistry. For an example, first rate. Kevin, what if I had a problem with small seed broadleaves, such as mare's tail, lamb's quarter, and the ever popular water hemp? Yes, Eric, there's a lot of uh, new products out and a lot of different products from different manufacturers that works well on small seeded broadleaves. Um, of course, the old yellows, Prowl, Treflon are good combinations to use with something else on the small seeded broadleaves. Another example would be the Authority products, Sonic, Outlook, Verdict. There's a whole number of different groups that we could use to cover that. But as you well know, Eric, the discussion does not stop there. No, Kevin, it doesn't. A whole other conversation has to take place primarily focused around what type of tillage or incorporation you plan to do with these herbicides. For example, if you can't double incorporate Treflon, it probably isn't the product for you. Want to elaborate on that, Kevin? Trifloralin is a product that needs to be incorporated within approximately 24 hours of application. Part of this problem is that Sun will deactivate the active ingredient in Trifloralin. If you can't incorporate it properly, there's a chance that you will have streaks in your field. The next step in your soybean pre plan of attack is to understand how flexible your window of application will be. For example, some of these herbicides need to be applied before the actual planting of the seed, while others can be applied or need to be applied after planting. And while there are few, some can be applied after crop emergence. The main thing to remember with these herbicides is that if your application window has been changed due to weather or other events, be flexible enough to change your strategy. In almost every case, we can come up with a good plan B. When we have decided which herbicide to use on the, your farm, we need to sit down and have a conversation about the application and what is expected from that herbicide. These pre-plant and pre-emerge herbicides have to be activated by water and how much water is needed to activate varies by product. The majority of them will not be activated by less than a quarter of an inch of rain. It varies from a half an inch to an inch of rain soon after applications for most herbicides. For example, Zidua, one of the longer lasting herbicides, requires the most amount of rain to activate. However, we can't control this factor. Water, of course, is up to Mother Nature, unless you're fortunate enough to have the option of irrigation. Imagine if we don't receive sufficient rainfall to activate these herbicides, but weeds do emerge. Most of the herbicides have only below ground activity, so if it becomes activated after these weeds emerge, most herbicides will not affect those that are already emerged, and a post application will be required. There are a few that do have some reach back activity. Some of these chemistries and products have a potential to cause a crop response if certain environmental conditions are met. In the majority of crop responses cases, however, the response does not equate to yield lost at harvest. This is a good reason, Eric, to be out checking them fields early. 
Deciding what pre-emerged soybean product to use is something that should be evaluated every year in order that we can maintain the integrity of various modes of action to prevent resistance in the future. We hope this brief summary has taught you how Eric and I and other AFS agronomists go about finding the right product for your field. Thanks for tuning in and please join us next week for another episode of AFS Agronomy Update.